Are we headphones? <laughs> I, I just can't get it out of my head. <laughs> what? <laughs> just full Kendall Roy. <laughs> Do you know we had, you know those ones who were just like <laughs> they just hold it, just hold it with one. <laughs> Here he is, Fred again. As you recording? Oh great, cool. Okay. Um, yeah, I feel like Shibley's a little bit nervous today. No, I'm not. Like I'm not bit... nervous. I'm just thinking about how do I really want to kick this off? Okay. How can I mug you off in the best possible way? <laughs> um, Go on, hit me with your best shot. <laughs> I've made it easy for you, okay. look at me. Yeah, 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 no, 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 absolutely. 2010 called and they want their sunglasses back. <laughs> Part of the Far East movement, flying like a G6, is it? Terrible. 2010 called, these are Tom Ford sunglasses. <laughs> and they look terrible. Oh my gosh, straight out of Primark. Off. Straight <laughs> off. Straight, they're not even mine, I borrowed them off all of the guys. Anyway, we're back. We are, we're back um, for a new season, well, a complete rebrand, relaunch of our podcast. Um, it went so successfully last time that we thought we'd bring it back. We're now bit more called, budget. Yeah, bit bit more budget. We've got, got banners. Spielberg in. Yep, yeah, banners. We're now called the Insight Job. Hopefully, everybody can see that. Conversations to inspire. Um, how do we want to go about explaining this? Explaining the podcast. Yeah, yeah. Do we need to do that? I think so. So basically, it is Shipley and I sitting here rambling about the comings and goings of life in recruitment. We are going to have some exceptional talent joining us on the pod, uh, but not all from recruitment. We're going to have people who've set up their own businesses in, be that in fashion, in hospitality, um, but also we're going to speak to people in recruitment to talk about how they've built their careers, they've built their businesses and hopefully inspire conversations to inspire some people along the way. Yeah, definitely. I think we just want to have a little bit more fun this time. So we've had to take creative control. Now Spielberg and I are leading Spielberg. the Spielberg. Man like. Did you know there are 464 million podcast listeners across the world? Christ, that is a lot. Quick maths, what percentage is that, is, is that of the global population? Oh, um, I don't know, like six percent. Oh gosh, quick maths, poor maths. Not bad, six percent. Not bad. We'll give you that. Is Not it, too shabby. What is it? Yeah, yeah, bad five percent. But we'll give you that. Okay, Rain Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we've actually moved to a new location. We're based over in Mayfair. Uh, yes, we I, are. So we say Mayfair. We're basically Marble Arch. So I know that is technically Mayfair, but it's not really what you think when you think Mayfair, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I mean, we're not in Sexy Fish in Barclay Square, do you know? But we're not far. No, no. We're, we're a 15, 20 minute walk away, which is no, not bad. 15, to, are you crawling there? <laughs> I like it? to walk at a nice leisurely pace. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> A new segment that we've got here on the Insight Job, which Murray's insisting on, um, oh. is Murray's Random Fact of the Week. Take it away, Murray. Murray's Random Fact of the Week. I love how it's now been labelled. Well, I guess, to be fair, because the other segment we're going to have is Will's Whinge and Moan. <laughs> yeah, <I'm laughs> yeah. So that's the other bit. <laughs> uh, right, my random fact. I've got a few. Okay, pick one okay, and yeah. save the rest, because otherwise we'll run out quite quickly. <laughs> what city in the world has the most five-star hotels? I would like to go something quite niche and say Singapore. Interesting. I feel like that's got a lot of five-star everything. Yeah. Some other people that I said this to yesterday, because I've been, you know, scouting for answers. Uh, people said Dubai. Oh, yeah. Okay. New York. Yeah. Yeah. The answer... London. London. Yeah. Very 75 nice. five-star hotels in London. Can you name them all? I mean, I'd give it a good go, <laughs> I reckon. <laughs> we've, been, uh, we've been joined by um, this reprobate sitting in between us. Uh, we made you a promise that we were going to bring some inspiring, motivational... <clears throat> character building uh, people on to talk to and we couldn't find any of them so <laughs> we've had to settle for um our managing director mr sasha bandiera welcome to the pod <laughs> great time <laughs> great time Perfect to take timing. a drink cheers nice to be here how does it, i was gonna say how does it feel to be here um in my boardroom yeah really really nice mate i'm enjoying it God, he's got like stamp it down ever doesn't yeah. it in my boardroom yeah I'm very pleased that you guys managed to get this off the ground it's been some time in the making 
it's not quite off the ground just yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll yeah. Recording our first episode. <laughs> um, no, well, look, well, welcome, as we said, to to the new the new podcast, the Insight Job, where we really want to delve deep into um, some inspiring conversations, more about the world of recruitment. Um, and what we thought would be a really cool way to kick this off, um, because you have had actually a really interesting journey um, throughout your time here, always. <laughs> I don't know why you're laughing. Jokes aside, I, I, I wasn't joking. The rest of your life, dull. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> oh but you, but you Here's did start here. Farm. What <laughs> you did start here uh, fifteen years ago or so? No. Yep, fifteen years ago. Yeah. Uh, how did it all begin? How did it all begin? Oh my god. Um, the short version. Please. Short version. I was working at Phones for You in a shopping centre. Do the do the, the thing. <laughs> um, I've I never seen that before. <laughs> Have you not? No. Also, sorry. I like, the fact, she... I like the fact that you just said I can do it with both hands. Uh, <laughs> that was the most go on, technical. Go on, give us a look. Oh, oh no. God. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, you asked for the short version here. Sorry. Um, and while selling to people. A few, few people over the years mentioned recruitment and at one point uh, on a dull day, um, I decided that I wanted to quit what I was doing and um, explore something in London. So I contacted a rec to rec which is a recruitment agency that finds jobs for recruiters and he sent me along for three or four interviews at three places, three or four places. Um, got told no effectively from three of them uh, and then the final one was the company that he actually worked for which was uh, Ocean which happened to be the sister uh, sister agency of uh, Oyster. Um, Obviously told a me theme to come in. going on there. Is there ocean oyster? Yeah, don't ask me why. Oh, okay. um, and then I came in for a chat, and about an hour later, I was offered a job to start on Monday. Fair play. You know, now, you, so. you, you obviously started here then as a trainee, right, coming through, and this mm. is 15 years ago. Mm. Social media wasn't so much of a thing. No, no, no Instagram, no LinkedIn. No, none of that sort of stuff. There was no LinkedIn. In 2008, it wasn't something we were discussing around the office. Fair. I do remember when uh, the director did bring it up. Yeah. Um, and said, and to be fair, Jack did turn around and say, LinkedIn, everyone needs to get on this. This is going to be the future. And when it came to that sort of stuff, he was bang on always. Fair. Well, what, what I've always wanted to ask you about a little bit more is some of the wild times. Because there, <laughs> no. there's, there's obviously quite, it's massively different. It was a company of what, eight Ten. people? Yeah. Ten people. It must have been pretty mad, no? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I mean, come on, I'm tell us really all about sure. it. I mean, listen, look, it was between eight and 14 people at any one time. We didn't hire in groups. So it was only like, you know, one person starting every couple of months and another person leaving every couple of months. We were based in Soho and the average age in the office was 25, including the director. Um, <laughs> and, um, you know, like most small lifestyle businesses, being honest, you, you work hard, play hard. So there's a lot of hours put in and a, and a lot about probably keeping people, to be honest, was going out and having fun afterwards. So we were probably out Wednesday, Thursdays and Fridays, right. most weeks, for, for years, for literally for years. If you, if you fail a target, people used to dress up and then have to go out and stop the traffic in the middle of Soho whilst doing press-ups <laughs> and things like that. I love that. Um, we should do that once, to be fair. Once yeah. we let off a smoke grenade, a military-grade smoke grenade, and shut off most of... Soho streets. <laughs> what? Uh, How did that come about? Who has a, who has a military grade smoke grenade well, just lying around? I drove to work one day and Dan asked to see inside the car and in the boot I had a bulletproof vest and a military grade smoke grenade. To be fair, you are from Croydon. So. Yeah, so that's it. That's <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. When, um, that doesn't make sense. Uh, when you, yeah, when you're from there. So yeah, so, but yeah, bar that, I mean, it was just constantly, um, yeah, it was good times. But it was long, you know, it was work hard, play hard. That was it. It, yeah, it was yeah. always safe stuff, though. It yeah. wasn't, you know, no one was, you know, everyone enjoyed it. Yeah. yeah. Everyone part so of it. How did you go from being a trainee to working your way up to manager, director, managing director and owner? Um, how, how did I... I mean, listen, look, I can tell you what we didn't have. So we didn't have a career path. There were not no real sort of job descriptions and there wasn't really any sort of um, structure in how we manage people or operated everything was just kind of just happened, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. um, but to, to be fair, as the confidence grew in what I was doing, so recruiting, then moved on to, right, I want to try something else, and then that became managing. And then I really enjoyed managing, and the recruitment started to take a bit of a dip in terms of interest. Um, 
And, you know, Dan was just very open, and, and Fish, prior to that, my, my previous director, was very open to, to me following that route and, and being given the extra responsibility. From my perspective, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't really trained. It was trained on the job sort of stuff. How do I do this? How do I do that? Oh, I've cocked up this, I've cocked up that. But as far as I could, could see, that they were giving me responsibility. And with that level of responsibility, I just had to give it 110% because I couldn't fail and I didn't want to let anyone down. So... I massively just enjoyed that journey. And then things just came to me. And, and as I succeeded, you know, Dan would then say, you know, if you do this, you'll get that. And then I just, you know, I, I had to learn to trust him. And, and then when I did... What was the... Sorry, sorry, one sec. What was the... Can you remember of all the times he said to you, if you'll do this, you'll get that? <laughs> what's the most... What's the one that stands out the most to you or the biggest rewards? After Mark left, Fisher left, um, it was the first week of January 2012... And he said, well, you're the most senior person by default in the company. Um, there was 12 of us, 13 of us. And he was like, right, you're in charge of all of them. And he said, I know this is tough work for you. I know you don't know 100% what you're doing, but you'll get there. And if you do this, you'll get to AD and director. And it was only a couple of years later when, you know, I started coming up with a sort of a business plan to expand the business and then was given shares. Um, so, so, yeah, so that was, kind of, that was kind of it. And it's always been like that. You know, I've always worked like that. Dangled a carrot and then just chomped yeah. it. And in more recent times, it's probably changed a little bit because mm -hmm. I don't really have that anymore. But um, I kind of dangled the carrot in front of myself in terms of what I could do with you guys and the business and, you know, what we can achieve and where we're going, really. So I'm just kind of making it up as I go along. Yeah. Good to know. Make it up as I go along. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that's really nothing, I can tell you nothing here. Good. Nothing is linear. You can have oh, an objective, course. but in terms of time frames and what it actually ends up looking like, always tends to be different. But actually, in regards to the presentation we did to the company back in 2020, yeah. um, the five and 10 year plan, actually, I'm still quite confident on most on of the metrics. Yeah, for, in for, the right direction. For, for, for achieving. And I think as well on that is loads of the things that we plan in the journey of getting there other doors open and other things present themselves that we then mm -hmm. obviously have to go and run with along the oh, way. Oh, 100%. And that's exactly what's happening now. And I think a lot of that comes down to the people. Like yeah. you guys. You guys start to expand my mind and go, what about this? What about that? And then once I know you guys have got that ambition and you're tweaked to, to, to achieve whatever goals it is, then it's just working. So it's, again, it's still that organic sort of, you know, growth. Yeah, yeah. Figuring spread. things out. Yeah, just figuring yeah. things out. Which is the most fun bit, right? Because we're a young business where everyone mostly is organically grown here and we're just, you know, teasing out the... the um... You touch me. No, sorry, you were... You were <laughs> sorry, that's... This. Yeah, yeah, well, obviously, I, I move around a lot. The difference from then, what have you found more challenging? Stepping up to something like managing director, particularly at that time when it was only 12 people, or when you first came in as a trainee? And actually just learning yeah, recruitment. Good, good it's question. Because a lot to take on when you first start. So I, I can say now, the learning, the first 18 months here was a real um, shock for me and a, and a struggle in lots of, uh, in lots of ways, including... Why so? Just, um, I was going to say I was, a, I was a, an emotionally challenged child, but <laughs> um, at 22 years old, you're only really just finding your feet and you think you know everything and you really, really don't. And whatever confidence you think you've got is going to come in later life just through work and experience and, and people around you. So I think the, the psychological challenge was a lot harder as a recruiter. Cutting into MD or, or being in charge of a business, it was just different stuff. I knew what I needed to do. I knew how to work things, but then it was learning things new. So how to run a business, a P&L, you know, what decisions to make that weren't just recruitment decisions. It was right investment in this or investment in that or an extra person here or an extra person there. And I didn't have a rule book and I didn't have, you know, um, uh, anyone else uh, around me. We did have, I did have a, a couple of non-exec directors for, for short periods over the five or six years, which were invaluable, um, with outside knowledge and, you know, just streamlining things and making things happen a bit quicker. Um, but part of that has just been learning on the job, really. Any, um, any massive regrets along the way? Hiring you to uh, <laughs> not find. Do you know what? I, 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 I knew, knew that was coming. Yeah. I was also thinking, surely the um, the haircut that you used to have when you first started. We've seen those pictures. <laughs> oh, shut up. <laughs> we'll, we'll try and a put good, a picture in the video. We'll that was a good, good year. Um, <laughs> no, honestly, it's not. Though. Any any sort of um, you know uh, career regrets, 
moments if you were to go back, you could change things you'd do differently? I mean, definitely thinking about myself as a younger manager, I still, I, I still back myself that a lot of what I was saying or the, the thought process that I had was the right one. Yeah. However, I probably didn't act uh, the way a manager or director should do in the sense of how perhaps I spoke or conversed with people, mm -hmm. how I communicated or, or lack of, um, and perhaps the sort of maybe abruptness that I perhaps used to have. Um, and, and I can say that comes literally down to not, not having someone there to sort of copy day to day and also just being a young 27, 28 year old who was effectively a commercial director of a business. Um, yeah, it just you, you just have to learn those things. Um, yeah. So I, I like to think that I've grown up a lot. Um, and there's probably a few decisions that I've made where perhaps I, I rushed to those decisions or didn't come to them quick enough, and that's it. But, you know, hindsight and all the rest of it. Fair. Has anybody told you that you could be a politician? The way you do dance around and dodge questions without Actually, giving I've a proper trained. answer. Um, <laughs> fantastic. Well, I guess sort of planning skills and, and the rest of it as you're talking about. The company, when you then started taking over, was what? Uh, as I said before, eight to 14 people yeah. hovering around that. We're now headcount of over just 100, 100 yeah. just over 100. How have you managed to do that? Because it was years of just being at the same level. Yeah. And we've scaled up quite, quite like, yeah, fair. It's just down to my Basically, and I, really. me and you, Shivers. Staff yeah. retention I, went up until I the can, last I can months. definitely <laughs> say, uh, having, uh, having a business, you, you, you can run. It's difficult, but you can, you can run one. To scale one, you, you need to have the foundations and structures in place. And I think I started to, to get, the, you know, fine tune that just before the pandemic. And then naturally when the pandemic happened was the time in which we had some, some, some months to think about strategy. Yeah. Um, and it almost came at a perfect time. The investment in terms of how we were operating, you know, processes, systems, et cetera, uh, and where you guys were at in terms of management experience just meant that I could then layer in on top and, and, and double the size. I think we've got pretty much, we're about a year away from having the foundations really solidified um, and then replicating will just involve, you know, uh, management. Finding the, the right next people. The generation of management to come through, which hopefully we're, we're working and growing on now. So um, I actually think getting to 150, 200 is totally feasible um, in the next couple of years, really. Right, moving forward now. Yep. You know, the next few years, what what would you say is, you know, for people who, oh, sorry, Shibley, you're going to stop I, me. I, sorry, I, yeah, I just wanted to, to stop because I think you're about to start to talk about forward plans. Yeah, yeah well, yeah, yeah, kind of, yeah. Well, the, well, one of the things I also wanted to ask you, right, is recruiters don't have a great reputation in general, mm. right? And that's just from, from across the industry and the rest. And you scaling up the business. Thankfully, we've had our own internal recruiter for the last sort of year, two years or so. Five years. Five years. Uh, <laughs> If she was on maternity for a couple of those, so come on, it's not really yep. working. Um, Good to see you, you're paying attention though, Shippy. Yeah, yeah, yeah off, off in the clouds, don't really work. Um, <laughs> no, but during that time, you've obviously had to speak to a lot of rec to -rex and and deal with them. And mm. that's sort of, you know, being in recruitment and knowing what the job is. Because when, when you're a graduate or, you know, just like going for your first job, you have no idea whether or not a rec to -rec is any good. You yep. just get put in front of people. Yeah. How have you found dealing with them over the years and how different is it from what we do compared to what they do? Okay, yeah, fair, good question. I mean, look, the, the principle is obviously the same and, and actually we've only ever hired non-experienced billers really. So I absolutely know what it takes to, to do their job. Um, I found it difficult, very hit and miss. The ratios, <laughs> the ratios weren't always great and actually probably not too dissimilar if we did it ourselves. The only thing is we just can't do it in volume like they can because we don't have the, the resources for it. Um, there are definitely, uh, you know, a handful of recruiters and again, individuals as opposed to agencies um, that serve this well. Um, I can think of, um, you know, probably Want to shout any out? Uh, yeah, J I mean, Julian. Julian was always very, very good. Um, you know, he never got it right all the time, but over the years, he definitely got us um, a good handful of people. Um, the TRM guys, yeah, Ed and the guy at TRM, and then what's the other? What was the other guy that was over at that? Um, and Nick. Nick. Used to be, yeah, for, I forget the company. No, company not Nick. Uh, no. Ollie. 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 Oh, from Ollie Fast Track. Going fast yeah, track. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Ollie was very good. Um, but they've got a hard job. They've got a really hard job and it's volume. It's, you know, low salaries, low fees, um, probably a high dropout rate. You know, I feel for them. It's not easy. Moving on then into what's about to happen and what's, what, um, you know, what, what the next chapter 
looks like, if you will. Obviously, for people who are thinking about coming or to coming to Oyster yep. or to join recruitment, yeah. Why would you say Oyster is a, is the place they should come? Or why would you say now is now is the time? Um, now is the time. I mean, listen, look, there's there's no time for anyone really. There's never a good time. Um, so if you're considering not, it not now, not quite the answer I was looking for. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. If you're considering it now, you might as well just you know put your head around the corner and, and, and come and see us. But we are still investing heavily on on how we uh, are structured, what we're doing internally, how we're operating. You know, we're not the finished article. There's lots to this business that's still not running, as far as I'm concerned, uh, to a good enough standard. And, and as soon as those things are done, again, it's just going to allow all of us to do what we're supposed to do instead of doing a, a, a bit of this and a bit of that across everyone's job roles. Um, and I think... You know, the plan for 150 to 200 staff is absolutely feasible over the next few years. And that just means, you know, people can come through, learn learn the trade uh, and have the opportunity to work up. There are plenty of agencies out there. I can't remember the percentage, but I'm pretty sure it's, you know, it's only, I don't know, I think 90 odd percent of agencies are under 10 staff or something like that. Mm. So in terms of career growth and progression and, and learning how to do things properly... Uh, there's a big opportunity right here. And Sash, thank you. It was a very professional, you know, sort of thought out, structured answer. But give us a proper answer, like what give people actually people want to hear. Want. Give the people what they want. Why should people come and work at Oyster? This is your elevator pitch. The, we're literally going to Vegas tomorrow. Literally. Oh, yeah, we're going to we're Vegas tomorrow. We're literally going to Vegas tomorrow. Listen, look. If you want to come and work in a place that's firstly in central London in Mayfair, uh, enjoy you know, people your age and above from all different walks of life to come in and, you know, no, that's shit. No, that, <laughs> that, was that was really good. good. That was good. Yeah, no. I thought that was quite good. Big that was good. Let's um, yeah. keep going. Like, we'll just leave, shall we? We'll I, let, keep yeah, going. Yeah, yeah. I can tell you this. Actually, if you're watching this and you've never been in recruitment, you could get a job pretty much everywhere. Um, there are salaries paid out there, et cetera, et cetera, that you might go, oh, that sounds great. What you're going to get here is a good, solid foundation in terms of training, support, the team and a lot of it is around the team like getting through the first six to nine months is hard work you need actually good people around you to get you through not just your own ability most people nowadays you you, you need that sort of uh, moral support and we've got such a great team here that you know the split just on guys and girls is nearly 50 50 we've got probably the most one of the most diverse recruitment companies in london everyone here is just, you know, literally come in, learn a trade, and they'll be given every opportunity if you work for it, the same way I had. So I just think there's so much to go at. Um, obviously, Shipley, what, how long are you here? Eight years? Seven and a half, seven, eight years? Seven, seven and a bit? bit? Yeah, seven yeah. and a half. And me yeah. nearly nine, right? That's a long time. Okay. Yeah, where are you going with this? <laughs> no, no, like pretty much the entire of our 20s, really, yeah, really yeah, and yeah, our yeah. working career thus far have been here. Yeah. Us three, yeah. right? Plus everyone else. Mm. Uh, that, I mean, there's not many people I think who can say that, right? Do you do you think you, if you look at us now versus when we first came in, obviously we've grown in terms of we're older and yeah. that kind of thing, but have you seen a real, like, I guess, you know, a journey or change in us? Oh, my God, 100%. And look, you, you two especially, I mean, you're both very childish and immature to begin with. <laughs> uh, poor so dress sense. Young. Um, and oh, all the rest of it. What you. did he say? Poor dress poor sense. Dress sense. Poor dress sense. Look, I think... Just um, like an 18-year-old in your 36? 36. Oh, you look at that. Exactly <laughs> half. 38 in two weeks. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's been a massive change in you guys. And um, you know what? I, I, I can see that from quite early on with people. This is where they need to get to. These are their, you know, their, you know, their downfalls. This is what they need to learn. But actually getting people to actually live in and buy into that and go, you know, I want to be better. I want to learn. I want to take some constructive advice. That, that doesn't always happen. And I think, you know, there's been plenty of conversations that the three of us have had where quite easily you could have thrown in the towel and gone, sod it, I don't believe in what you're saying, I don't like it, whatever, whatever. And you stuck it out. And I can say that that's why you're both both doing well, you know. Um, you still got a lot to learn, but fact, it's pretty amazing to be able to think that you just came in and picking up the telephones and now you're directors of teams and stuff like that doing podcasts and the things that you guys want to do, not even what I yeah, want to fair. do. Fair. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was going to say, we've done so well that we're now doing a podcast. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Instead of actually recruiting. <laughs> what Anything not to, to do. avoid the day job. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Um, I think a lot of, um, you know, the chat is always focused around people coming into recruitment, right? But mm -hmm. I think, I definitely from our experience, um, 
it's getting people who are in that kind of six to 12 month period where they've come in, experienced a few highs, a few lows. Is it really for them? It's really difficult, the rejection, all that, all that kind mm. of piece. Um, what would you say to people, you know, just to, you know, get them to stick with it, just to get through that, that hump? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I don't want to use the cliche, cliche you know, Rome wasn't built in a day. But, you, you know, if anyone's been to the gym, if you go to the gym for a little while and then you quit, you're not going to see any sort of... Have you, you ever know, been in a gym? Uh, I'm naturally <laughs> gifted with my genes. Um, you know, you're not going to see any sort of progress. So sticking things out is absolutely necessary. And I think swapping from job to job for, for a job title or for an increase in salary or for a freshen up is absolutely not needed or um, or helpful admittedly not every business out there is is perfect so that there may be good reason as to why you might move on but in all honesty you're not gonna you're just not gonna get anywhere most most people as well if they've been to university i mean what did they do in their first year i can guarantee you 99 percent will turn around and go nothing i got pissed the entire time when did you start learning stuff about year two and year three and then i took it really seriously and then i got a two one or a, a first or whatever and I think the same in recruitment, right? If you can just see that past the first year and get past all the, you know, the waffle that goes on and, and whatever else, you can, oh my God, you could do so, so well. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it is, it's quite astonishing what some of you guys and what some of the team do here now. Definitely compared to even what I was doing. I mean, the numbers, the, the speed in which things are being picked up, the achievements. And actually, people are just a lot more sensible now. The amount of people we've got now just like putting down deposits on their first place and three years in, like I'm just... I'm just shocked. Yeah, it's Literally madness. shocked. I think on that, it's one thing that is probably people don't say enough when you join recruitment that for your first, you know, when you join recruitment, you've got no reputation and you've got no network. And at that point, you have no value to yeah, a client no or a candidate. Yeah. And it takes a good year, if not longer, to build that up. So, yeah. of course, for your first first 12 to 18 months, until you build a solid network, you've no yeah. value. That's it. Do you know what I mean? So it's like it needs to come with a postage that's sign that says 18 months in, that's when you'll start to yeah. have... And actually, good point, because I was even talking to one of the groups here the other day, um, which is, they're about nine months in. And, you know, obviously, we run KPIs, we run numbers. I know other agencies don't, but we do, right? And, um, you know, I think I was trying to get across to them that this hard work you're putting in with the hours, the phone calls, the rejections, all the rest of it, it kind of goes up at the beginning, and then it comes down, meaning that within about two years, you're not doing those phone calls anymore because people know you. So when you're making, you know, and you've got a job to fill and, and you're thinking of candidates, you're not calling 25 different people. You're calling the top three because you know them and you spent the last year or 18 months meeting them and calling them and building a relationship with them. And the same with the clients. Clients are now calling you. So actually, you know, with all the hard work and, and numbers that you're putting at the beginning, it pays dividends 18 months in uh, forward. You're not doing as, as much. Um, and if anything, the only downside to that, from my perspective always, is look at what you're doing for putting in half the effort. <laughs> if you put in just what we, we require of you at the beginning, you'd actually probably be doing double the output. So, um, you know, I don't think people realise that. I think they kind of think, oh, God, God, the first six months was this, this, this. Shit is going to be like this for the next five years of my life. Sod it, I'm going home. Like, it's just not like that. Yeah. Um, you know, you shouldn't have to work as hard um, as you did in that first year. Yeah, you know, when you're Work trying smart, things not out. hard. Eh? One final question. Yeah. Over the years, you have parted with probably let's say a fair number of people. Yep. Yeah. Granted, some some have resigned, but a lot you've you've had to let go of for various reasons. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what would you say is the most common reason why you've had to let people go Ooh. over the years? The common reason. The most common reason. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, how do I put that into words? Uh, standards so it's not the ability to not not from the ability of not being able to recruit they could recruit it's just people basically uh taking the piss okay. not towing the line not doing what's expected of them and i think when you've got a business where you're on teams etc you, you you need to do your bit i'm not expecting everyone to do the same as the next person in terms of you know placements and gross profit and all the rest of it that's fine that comes down to ability right but people not can't be asked you know it's all about attitude as far as i'm concerned and if you can't be asked you're out of the business that is it i don't care um we do have as you know strike policy so it's not like you know we walk them in and go you got a bad attitude sod off you know people are given fair warning in some cases more recently six to nine months of written you know discussions yeah. with people and you're sat yeah. there going why 
are we at this point again? Right, you need to go. And, it, and for me, and, and luckily for, for us because of the growth of the business, you know, about five or six years ago, or seven, six or seven years ago actually, we were able to be at a point where it didn't matter about getting rid of people that build us money, which was the one thing we had to kind of give people a pass when we were growing as a business, because if we lost people, we would, we would um, you know, we would struggle. But now we're at a point where it doesn't matter who you are or how high you are or, or how much you bring in. If you're, you know, you're a bad egg or you're taking the piss, you're out. That um, made me think, egos. Yes. Do you think there's a place for egos in recruitment? Yeah, I, I think I, I think an ego will will probably get you quite far, but I think a subtle ego, i.e., not somebody going around boasting this or talking like this or that or put, you know, you know, giving off the the wrong impression. I think if you if you've got an internal ego that's motivating you or firing you up. So let me let me let me rephrase the question. Yeah. Do you think there's a place for toxic egotistical behaviour in recruitment? Absolutely not. I mean, Absolutely. <laughs> Does you, it happen? You put the yes. phrase is toxic. I can't imagine. No, but I think anyone's, anyone's going to say yes. To that. Yeah, actually. Hey, well, yeah, I'll, well, I'll tell you this. When I joined here nine years ago, yeah. there was a lot of toxic, egotistical people yeah. who, who were put on pedestals. De definitely, but, but you wouldn't, you wouldn't you. turn around and go like, "Oh yes." You're no, but no. Ego. Sorry, but that, so that, a that was a combination about. of not having um, worldly experience of building a business. Yeah, yeah. Confidence. Yeah. Secondly, you, you didn't have anyone else to do the job, so you, normally you'd put the top biller or the top performer in charge of a team. Of course. And as we now know, you know, managing and and and, and doing a job is two very very different things. Um, so yeah, people were put into position that perhaps shouldn't have been, um, and that was it. And you know, to a point, we had to allow things to just slide because otherwise we, we would have been stuffed. But now we are so far over that hurdle. Completely. And actually, I can quite confidently say, smugly, that <laughs> if I look at any of those people now, they haven't gone on to achieve really any any of that type of management um, positioning uh, at all anywhere else. So you know, it just goes to show it wasn't you know it wasn't us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, if they were that hungry yeah, yeah. for management, they would have gone and done it somewhere else or become a director or done X, Y, and Z. Most people give it you know give it the beginning and don't really want to follow through. So that's it. Um, Sash, before we wrap up, is there anything you would like to say to use use this platform to pass on any words of wisdom or advice to anyone thinking about coming to join Oyster or indeed maybe just thinking about starting a career in recruitment? Yeah, um, I think most people starting a career in recruitment, they're probably younger, they probably don't have the confidence or don't have the understanding of what it's going to take. And all I would say is, if you just put in a lot of hard work, you put in the hours, you do is, you know, that's asked of you, and you allow your confidence not to get the better of you and think, you know, I can't do this. I'm going to fail. I'm going to quit. I'm going to do all of those, you know, horrible things that your mind does to you. If you can get over those sorts of um, hurdles, um, then you can really become and achieve anything you want as far as I'm concerned. And, you know, whether I was looking at myself or a good handful of people that work for us, there is so many examples of that. And I think actually if you were to say, again, what makes us different, we know that because you know you guys know that. that's something we talk about quite a lot um about nurturing um our guys and supporting them through through everything and i think this is a great place to be able to do that because it's not an easy job um and if you can get over that six to nine month hurdle you really can achieve you know quite great things and a proper career as far as i'm concerned recruitment is a proper career that's not going anywhere yeah that's yeah. not going anywhere listen thank you so much for joining us on the pod for clearing what we know is such a busy busy schedule for you <laughs> you know the busiest man in the whole of london um yeah, um, it's been great. Cheers, mate. And um, well, I'll see you in 10 minutes. We've got meetings soon. So, yeah.